peace and love guys um i have been making sketchbooks for just about three years now maybe even longer and um there's one type of sketchbook that kind of eludes me some from time to time just because i don't make it as much let me just i'm just trying to get this closer to me so that i can okay and it's called it's called a kettle stitch it's also known as a a sewing method i want to call it a kettle stitch though because that's what i'm used to i'm not sure if that's the proper name for it but i wanted to show you how i do it just in case you're curious uh first thing you're gonna need is obviously paper um you're gonna need some kind of string or twine this is um cooking twine i'm probably gonna double it up and what's going to happen is this is going to be uh, a binding that holds the pages together like that uh, with this one I'm trying a new method of scoring and it's not necessary I just wanted to see how well it would work so first I start with my blade once I feel like I have enough of a groove I go with a steak knife and I just one one way I go one way if you go the other way now the reason why I chose a steak knife a serrated knife is because it's going to get me those holes a lot quicker see on to the next one and you just you keep on doing that until you got all um all of your markings which i sorry i didn't tell you that part where's my ruler i don't okay that's it it's right here okay so what i did was i measured it and what i got was it's exactly nine inches so from those nine inches I measured an inch apart from the top. Then I got the center of the book score. I marked that with a pencil. And then on each side, I did one and three quarters inches from this mark here. And it's not like your measurements, really, it does not matter. Your measurements are where you want the uh, stitching to be. Um, these ends here are not going to have the twine. Uh, it's only going to be these three here. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you want to have them further apart or closer, that's up to you. And then I'm just going to, um, score these on the line that I made with my blade. And that line going and then I'm going to use my knife again so I'm just going to speed this up. Okay once you have that part done uh, what you're going to do is I'm going to utilize the back of this chair and I'm going to tape the twine here and here and I'm gonna put it as tight as possible and I'm gonna do three lines to match my book and the book is gonna go right there I'm gonna sit it on top of something and then we're going to sew the book I'll get you guys set up so you can watch okay so now I got you set up behind the chair so that you can see what's going on 
Right now, I'm gonna use the twine. And I am going to get them set up to match here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the book all the way to the edge. And I'm gonna make a line from here to here. And I remember I said I was gonna use two strings. So I'm gonna make them long enough where I can where I can tape them from one edge to the next. Definitely not gonna need as much string. Um, yeah. Trying to think. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Cut my first piece. And what I'm gonna do I'm gonna measure three the same size as this one. So I'll just cut right there. Ooh, on my hands. I was making another book before this. Okay, so we're measuring that. <clears throat> Same size, more or less. Snip, snip. Okay. So the first one is probably your one that you're gonna wanna get <clears throat> the most accurate only because then you can just gauge the other ones with that one. So I'm just using masking tape. I'm gonna leave a significant amount of string out so that I have enough so that when I t try to pull it and give me enough um, resistance, I'm, I don't fear having the string get pulled out while I'm working. So I'm just gonna keep this straight and you see how it's lined up more with that than that? That's not what we want. So I'm gonna scooch it over And now it's it's better lined up. And once I get this guy taped down, I can bring the book further back, line it up, and get the other guys on there. I'll speed that up. Okay, so now that I have my guys all taped up and ready to go, I am going to start so a shade cover. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna take my guys out. And it's very important to keep them facing the same way. So I'm just going to start with my most bottom page and start sewing. So I'm gonna do this color thread. And measuring your thread, you wanna go as many signatures of you as you have. So each one of these pages counts as a signature. I'm doing one page each because of the type of paper that it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my string twelve times. And that's what I know. So one, two, three, four, Now I'll get my 
my scissors again. And give it a little snippity snip. And now that's more than enough string, so I'm not worried about running out and whatever I don't use, I can always use on another project. So, give it a little, uh, A little bit of lube. Okay. Okay. Now, um, usually. I do uh, just one, but I think I'm gonna double this up. I think I want it nice and thick. So I'm gonna double them up and I don't think that's gonna mess up my measurement that much. But if it does, we can always fix that with more string. We're all set with our with our uh, with our uh, needle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in. We're gonna go in. Come on, come on, you can do it. Right there, with the needle. That's the first hole. So. Let's try to get it in. My angle is really, really crap. Okay. Now, get that guy lined up. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need, um... beginning is taking longer than planned. Here we go. I'm going to leave a considerable amount of thread. Okay, and here we go. So you basically pull it through one end. Don't get your string caught on anything. I'm gonna try to get it so that I need a smaller book. Or just to turn it. Duh. There we go. That's better. So now we're gonna go around and back into that hole we just went in through. Okay. Once I get a couple of these done, I'll speed it up. And you really have to be careful with your string and it getting tangled at this point. So, you know. Okay, so now, before you tighten it, um, you hold one, hold them down, turn it lower, and Nice and tight. Not too tight. All right. Next one. In one way. Back in.
and then nice and tight again. And you see what I mean about that rope being nice and secure? You do not want that falling midway. Next one. Now I love this stitching. I think it's really pretty, but it's very time consuming. So I don't do it as much as I would like to, but I felt since I was doing it, I might as well show you guys, right? So that's what I'm doing. Now, once we get to this guy right here, it is time to add the next page. So remember that pack, that stack that we flipped over? You just take that top one and add it, line her up. And that first hole we made, we're gonna put the needle in. And now we got, we have our signature and we go again. Make sure you're on the other side of the rope, right? Consistency is key. Make sure you're lined up before you start tightening anything. Now, I'm noticing that these are not lined up. So I think, I think I'm flipped over the wrong way. So good to find that out now. See if we can pull it out and just flip her back like where it's supposed to be. But how did I do that? All the moving, that's what happened. All the moving back and forth. Okay. So I'm going to take this thread out. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to just line it up. Just double check that I am accurate in my assumption that I flipped it back over. Okay. Now I need to make sure. Professionals at work here, ladies and gentlemen. Professionals at work. Okay, so let's get her lined up. Mm -hmm. Just like that. And don't worry, I will not make you sit through the whole entire binding process. I will speed it up and what takes me 15,000 hours will look like, I don't know, 20 seconds maybe. So once I'm done with this signature, I will speed her up. Okay, having a hard time doing it. Okay. All right, and you don't want this too tight because it will mess up the binding. When you want to look, because your whole reason for making the, uh, your pages like this is for the simple uh, fact of your, your page laying flat while you're doing your art. It won't lay flat if you um, if you 
put it too tight, it won't lay flat. Now this is the this is very secure when you're when you're done. The binding is like oh look at my hair. It's everywhere. It is everywhere, I promise you. So I'm sad. Worse than a dog. Okay. And then back out to the other side. And then we're going to bring in a new signature. Make sure it lines up. And we're going to speed it up. So I'm putting in real-time mode just to show you uh, what we do when we get to this part where we've run out of string and we still have paper to bind. Just lining up the needle and the thread, getting them nice and even. Okay. Now, there. one knot and I'm going to put another knot And we'll continue just like usual. The nice size. Okay, so at this point, I still underestimated the amount of string and I have one more signature to do, but I'm just gonna leave it as is because I don't wanna see another one of these. Although I'm, I'm gonna get rid of this, you'll see me do that. So I'm just cutting a small portion of it. And then this part up here, I'm cutting all the way. Okay, and you won't you won't really notice that. It adds charm. How about that? All right, so I'm gonna take this off of here and show you what we do next. When we 
get to this part, what I like to do is give it a little, and then all of these are going to be pasted on the book cover. Let's start with this side. So it's gonna go, it's gonna be like that. Now I feel like these are just a little too long. Let's see how they, this opens up, see? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim, oh, I don't know I didn't tie this part off. So let's do that now. Okay. And then I'm going to cut these down a little shorter. And uh, if you've seen any of my other bookbinding videos, you know that I like to use recycled uh, cardboard from various uh, boxes that I rather not see in a landfill if I can make use of it. So I think these guys are gonna be a bit better because um, I'm going to have the open spine so you can see that like that. So I'm going I'm to be all the way on the edge with this. Like, and I think I don't want too much of a... So I'm gonna have it looking like that. Okay. So I am going to measure the book. I'm just gonna mark it. And I'm gonna mark this area too, but I'm gonna mark it with the pencil more out than in, because I want a little bit of lip on the um, on the outside and that's how I'm gonna get that look. So with my same perfect companion I'm gonna have to have a name for her because she's still around. I haven't lost her so maybe we can make a name for her. Oh and you know what before we lose the needle let's put it away Give me a second. so what i tend to do is use my ruler that has a nice grip on it so it doesn't slide anywhere while i'm trying to make a nice straight line line my ruler up with the mark that i made take my pocket companion and just go over that's three times already four five there we go six and she's off and then i'm gonna turn it around and i'm gonna do it again but this time I think I want to go a little bit further up. So I just want a little bit more space for the bottom and the top. One, two, three, four, and done. Now I'm going to take this guy and match it up with my other 
cardboard that I'm going to use and mark that. I know it's off a little, but you can see some of it. Oops. Let's line that up again. Make it nice and even, straight. And one line, two lines. Move the already cut one and do the same that we did. cardboard and, and you have to be really careful with this part you really want to be pressing down on the ruler and you want to be pushing down with enough force with the blade same all right so now we have both our covers now in traditional um, kettle stitching uh, you usually bind the cover to right along with the book. I don't do it like that. I don't wanna, I don't wanna see the string. So the way I do it is, I open up my twine. Just enough. it up actually I want to make a cover for my book cover only because I don't want cinnamon crust crunched, uh, cinnamon toast crunch to be what the book looks like. I don't. Cute. Maybe in another video, but that's not what I want. So I'm going to get my card stuff. Oh, that one is nice. It has a design, but it's like mellow enough that it's not a super busy design. So if you want to decorate on top of it, you can. I like the lines. I think I like this one the best. And I'm going to need two. Here we go. So I'm going to show you how I do the book covers with one and then I'll speed it up with the second one. So first I put the uh, cover in the center. I should put it this way though because it's bowy. Okay, I'm going to put it this way just because it's bowy. And then I crease over. First I do the both the top and the bottom and then I take this out and I just score it a little bit better Make sure it's centered, although this is not going to show if it's centered or not, so you really don't have to hurry if you're off center. 
So fold the other side over. And now you have it all sandwiched. And you have it all set once down. Now, once that is done, take the book out, score it again. Where's my, where's my pocket companion? I don't know where mine is. Okay. Okay. Now, once you, once you get to this part, you're gonna go and you're gonna cut it on the on the fold to that part right there, okay? So that you can fold it over. Then you're gonna come on this side and instead of cutting it straight down, you're gonna give it a little bit of an angle cut and meet it in the corner. Right, and then you're gonna do that with every corner. Actually, I usually do that one side and then go to the next side. That's not deviate from what I do. Right on the corner again. Smooth in the corner. Now that one didn't make it to where I want it. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more of a snip. I'm gonna make it to that end because I want that to be like that. Alright so down to the corner, and then cut it at an angle, and meet at that corner. Down to the corner, and move that out the way. And now we're ready to paste this in. I, for added security, I get some double-sided tape and I put some on my corners. This is not necessary as a step, but it just helps it keep it in enough uh, control for when I'm doing my last bits. All right, so I did this one. I'm gonna move it to the side along with the cardboard that I measured it with. And I'm gonna get the other cardboard and the other piece of paper, card stuff. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna speed this one up, okay guys? Okay, so now we're ready for the next part. So we're gonna take the beloved Mod Podge. Now, what's in here is actually homemade Mod Podge because I ran out a very long time ago of this stuff. This is like gold, but I learned how to make my own. So I keep the container because we don't want to see the stuff in landfill, but we don't have to, right? And um, I fill it up with um, my little concoction. So that's that. I need my... All right, this paintbrush is dedicated solely to my glue. Yes. Now, what I'm going to do is make a nice little puddle there of my Podge so I don't have to keep going in. You don't want to put too much though. You don't, you don't want this to be clumpy and lumpy. You do not want that. So now we're just painting it all from corner to corner. And it doesn't matter if it gets on the cover because that's where it's going anyway. So once we have that nice and on there, we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna center it. We're gonna get it to how we measured it. And then before we press down, we're gonna just a little bit more glue. And then we're going to just, you know, paint it on just like you did the cover. Now this is going to have a cover on it, so it really does not matter about the, the glue situation. 
great. I feel like it's too low. Can I slide it up a little bit? It's good, it's good, it's good. It's good. So we're bringing the, the top and the bottom, we're bringing that down first. Important, very important. And then we're gonna come over with the sides. I'm trying to do it so I don't get too much glue on my hands. And that's where the double-sided tape comes in. While the glue is drying, it's just added protection but the glue is gonna be the main, uh, the key player in this uh, cover making. And now we wanna get all any bubbles that we have out. And that's one. I'm gonna put this underneath my glass just to keep it from bowing and curling since the, the, it's all wet and uh, we need it to dry. So while that's drying and being pressed with my glass, we're gonna move on to the next cardboard and do the same thing. I'm gonna speed this part up so that you don't have to watch it done be done twice. Okay, now that we have our covers all set, we can bring our book back. Let's put this on. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't get the bubbles out. Let's get the bubbles out. And let's put this underneath our glass with the other one for the meantime. Okay, so we took the... Um, The twine and open them up. I didn't do this side, so we'll get that done. First, I'm gonna snip open my loops. Okay. And I'm gonna open up the twine again. I'll speed that up. So I'm gonna put a nice chunk of glue on each of them and we're gonna we're gonna get them down and we want them as you know as flat as possible but like I said it's not that big of a deal I'm going to get one cover. I'll get the first one that I did. And I'm going to put it on there. Now, do you see that? Do you see those bubbles? You want to take care of that before it dries because it's going to dry like that. So what I do is um, my leftover cardboard that I have sometimes, I just use it to press it down without ripping or possibly ripping the paper. Oh, let's get them bubbles out. Get out of your bubbles. Now this is optional. If you don't care about the bubbles, then you don't have to do this part. But I like a nice clean look. Especially, I am going to put this up for sale. And someone will take it and love it. And paint and draw and do all kinds of lovely creative things on it. So I want them to have a beautiful book. Now that that's done... I am going to put more glue on this paper, not this one, because it's it's slightly bigger than that. Although, you know what, maybe I will put it on here and I just won't go to the corners. Okay, here we go. And we'll do this again like the last one, like everyone in, in you know, before this. I will do the first one in real time and the second I will do in a faster mode. Hey, look at that. That, stuff, that was in my Mod Podge. Listen, it, get, it gets dirty sometimes. So 
I want to get to as far as I think it's going to be. And then what I'll, I'll do is I will get my corners on the book, on the actual book itself. Now you have to be careful that you don't get other pages because your pages will stick together and you do not want that. All right, so now that we have that done, we're gonna, I'm gonna do it this way so you can see. This part is gonna go flush right onto there. So let's make sure we have that nice and right. I'm going to put it a little further and then I'm going to slide it over. And then I'm going to flip it. So I have these planks, wooden planks that I use for my, uh, to hold my books together while they're drying. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this ready to put inside like that. I'm going to open this up to the first page, make sure that all the glue is on. Okay. And then I'm going to put this parchment paper in between. This thing is like a lifesaver. It does not stay stuck to your paper, it doesn't stay stuck to your covers, so using it to separate that stuff is a, it's, it's, it's a treat. It's necessary. Um, not necessary if you're very, very careful, but if you want to live on the dangerous side and not be so careful, <laughs> that is going to be your friend. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. Get a nice lather of glue on each of the pieces. Make sure you don't go off the corner like I just did. All right, and this time I'm gonna just put it on the page. I, I, I wasn't, a, I didn't have fun. <laughs> yeah, that was a little too dangerous for me as far as uh, getting the book going. So before I put the glue on the edges, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put my paintbrush down. I'm gonna take that parchment and put it in now and get it ready. That way, if I get glue on the outside, you know, you see what I'm saying? Um, if you guys want a video on how to make the Mod Podge alternative, uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments. I will make that video for you. Because not all of us can afford Mod Podge prices. You know what I'm saying? All right, so that's done. So now I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the other side. But this time I have to make sure that I am lined up with the other cover on the top and the bottom. So let's slide it over like we did. Right? Okay. And now you see how this is wanting to, you see how this is wanting to come off of the binding. We're gonna take that wooden board we're gonna put it in the, we're gonna sandwich the book in between. And what I'm going to do is leave a little bit of the book sticking out and you will see why. Let me get my clips. Sorry, I'm prepared for this video. Okay, and if you've seen any of my other videos, these are my Huskies. This is what I use. I don't put a, a lot of books on top of it, although you can just get really heavy books and put it on top of the wood. You can also get weights. I have done that. That's straight. There you go. 
All right, so now that it's nice and straight, sorry, now that I have this nice and straight, I like it straight um, with these bindings. You can actually make it um, bow. I don't want it to bow. I like nice and straight. So that's what I do. I'm gonna put my wood on each side and let's get that going again. Okay, now with that being done, we can also secure the binding. And what I do with that is I take more of your friend Mod Podge and I just apply it to the seam of the book. Now this I repeat and I will not show it on camera. I repeat this at least two times. If I feel like it needs a third coat, I would do another coat, but um, it's usually just twice. I give a nice thick layer, I let it dry, and then I put another layer. That's too much, way too much, okay. And what that does is it gives uh, your binding added uh, security. Well, this is not going anywhere. Drip, drip. Yeah, I like the way it looks too. Once it dries, it's like a nice shiny effect. And I just like the way it looks. Now, um, this is not going to be for sale for quite some time, only because I don't know what platform to use, to be honest with you. I've done the Etsy thing. I've done the eBay thing. I don't know if that's where I want to go. Uh, to to sell my my books so I guess stay tuned all right guys so here's the finished product what do you think lace blunt very pretty uh, there's our spine gorgeous 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 and uh, yeah I want to thank you guys for watching. If you found this video helpful, uh, that that was the point of it. So I'm glad you found it helpful. If there was anything that you questioned or you, you didn't get uh, a good handle on it um, and you're stumped or whatever, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments below and I will respond to them. All right, guys. Peace and love.